we get him first. You get her men before they can get you. Thanks be a god. We're gonna crush him. Mate. Bonnie! Long may they burn in LA. The boyfriend. Give him a new smile. Hold him! So I went round to his digs. All of his stuff's gone. Well, Greg, Barney, Bruce, I need you, Wal. You need me. You will none of us get what we want in life. Got any words for Kate Lee? But yeah, she's a lion stone, so it's got fat ass. <laughs> <laughs> Your visitor's giving you blue balls, has she? At least I got visitors. <laughs> Kate Lee doesn't run prostitutes. She's into slay good old stolen goods. Well, it turns out she's selling these. Where are they getting it from? Find out. Gentlemen, Kate Lee really is supplying cocaine. I want a head on a plate. Are you saying that there's no cocaine coming in through the ports illegally? Sir, with all due Bring respect. Bring me Kate Lee, the worst woman in Sydney. Get on something that gives her jail time. Anything. Just get off the street. In 1930, the Great Depression was starting to bite. Men were leaving their families and going on the Wallaby, the open road, looking for work. But in Razorhurst, there were still plenty of punters with pounds in their pockets looking for sex, sly grog, and cocaine. Tilly Devine made the most of it. She and Big Jim were raking in more money than ever before, which allowed him to indulge in new hobbies while she was busy congratulating herself on being top dog. For Kate, things weren't quite so rosy. Her sly grog and cocaine businesses were ticking over steadily, but they left her far too much time to think about her empty bed. Shot of whiskey, make it quick and make it a double. Two shillings. Two bob, a worky. Not yet, you don't. Next time, say please. Kate wants you. Herbert Brown. Your mates call me pal. Let's hope that's what we'll be then. Pals. You familiar with a Packard motor car? And an automobile in the world I can't drive. See, I got this talent for engines. They can purr like a kitten. I'm looking for more than a chauffeur, Herb. I'm looking for a bloke with guts and brains. Is that you? Well, let's just say I don't think you'll be disappointed in the, uh, performance department. <laughs> you want to get that under control. People might think you got the DTs. Now, I pay well, but I expect a lot. As far as you're concerned, I come first, second and third. No exceptions. So when do I start? Now, tonight. I've got some girls supplying snow and they're running out. You got an appointment on the wharf for the Chinaman. Neither Kate nor Tilly was ready for the sledgehammer about to come crashing down on them. Overnight, life in Razorhurst changed when the Parliament passed a Vagrancy Act that included the harshest consorting laws ever seen in a Western democracy. At long last, Bill Mackay had something to smile about. We've finally got the teeth we've been asking for. And you men are out of tight dogs. When two or more citizens of proven bad character are seen together, that's consorting to ex-convicts Talking about the football or last night's radio quiz, that's consorting. Woo! All the men in booking. Six bookings. We can lock them away for six months. Now we're getting somewhere. Just what we need, sir. Hello, right, fellas. I'm booking you for consorting. Good stuff.
love a man in uniform, don't you, Gwen? Mm, now I prefer one out of it. Very funny, girl. <laughs> you both booked for consorting. First booking normally got you a slap on the wrist. So it was for Nellie and Gwen. But Queen Tilly wasn't so lucky. Going on here? These friends are yours, Tilly? Yeah, of course they are. Now get your filthy stinking hands off him. Well, Throw in offensive language and assault police, and she was looking at a lengthy custodial sentence. Didn't risk my life in a flaming war to have my life treated like this. It's bloody un-Australian. Two fucking righties. Now you know. We catch you or your girls consorting, you're nicked. That's what the shit you'd expect from the bloody Bolsheviks. Fresh out of Long Bay Jail, Guido Coletti was back on the streets and desperate to prove he was more than just a fruit and veg man. He was desperate to be a player and desperate to win Nellie Cameron back to his bed. G'day, Purse. Oz. Good to be free men again, eh? Very nice. Always looking for work. He's hiring. I am. Didn't you used to be a barrow boy? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yes. <laughs> yes, I did. <laughs> if you ever laugh at me again, I will kill you. You work for me now. Order me another beer. Excuse me, sir. Got a light? Enjoy yourself, Percy. Thanks, boss. Watch out for the consortos. Bastards. That was last girl. I'm pretty sure you're quite familiar with. What are you doing here? Buying. Seen the color of his money? You never visited me at the bay. I make it a rule not to visit prisons. You visited Frank. So I hear you're back with him. I don't like to be alone. Now you don't have to be. It's not that simple. Yeah, it is. Ladies and gentlemen, tonight's business is fornication, not conversation. If you'd be as good as to pick one of these beautiful ladies. I'll take her. No. No, no, we don't. You're just going to run back to your wife and kids as usual. You don't have to worry about that. Don't I? 
It makes me feel second best, Frank. I won't be second best. It makes me feel like a whore. <laughs> you are a whore. Guido Coletti is back in town. He doesn't have a wife or kids to be running home to. Think about that when you slip in beside Mrs. Green later on. Think about where I might be. I've had a brilliant idea. Another one? A way to shove this consorting shit right up Bill Mackay's stinking asshole. I'm listening. We go home. We are home. No, home, home. England. It's where we belong. Don't you see? Listen, what about the girls? What about the business? What about this place? Oh, we keep it all. With our nice and our money, London's right for the picking. We could make a big bloody noise. Imagine it. I don't think so, sweetheart. I, I really don't know. Look, you just worry about picking wins, all right? Leave this to me. Your Honour, who I know is a fair, kind, and extremely handsome man, if you could find it in your heart, your beautiful, generous heart, to let me off these egregious charges so that I might return home to the land of hope and glory and see me poor old consumptive mum who is languishing away and maybe on her last legs, I would be eternally grateful. <laughs> what do the old farts say? He's gonna sleep on it. So I've been thinking about this plan of yours. Why don't you come round to it, have ya? You come inside and I'll tell you. Tell me now. The whole world doesn't have to know everything we're doing, love. I'm not embarrassed of us, even if you are. I think it's a bonzer idea. Oh, you gorgeous bloody bastard! It keeps you out of jail and keeps you happy. Oh, happiest girl in the world. Except things are bad over there too, love. Yes, bloody depression. Well, not so bad for them that's got means like us. Except our means comes from our businesses here. No reason why they can't keep going. Except if we both leave, every two-bit punk with a gun and a blade will be all over our setup like flies on shit. Not to mention your mate Kate. So what are you saying? I reckon you should go on your own. No way in the wide world! I'm not going anywhere without you. Only for a little while. No! Only until I find someone to manage no. things for us. Yes! Talking about getting someone we can trust with enough muscle to smack down any challenges. Then I'll join you. What about Frank? No, not bloody Frank. Why not? Look, he's loyal. He's proven he's got the ticker. No. Why the fuck not? Because Frank's a bloody follower, that's why. He's not a leader. Don't worry, I'll find someone. If the judge says yes, you go take London by storm, sweetheart. Guido had it all. A new career, beer money in his pocket, and a gorgeous girl in his arm. Who could ask for anything more? Kate wants to see her. What can I do for you, Kate? Well, I uh, hear you're coming up in the world. No more fruit barrow. Got yourself a bona fide bush. They're mean, motherless bastards, every one of them. They follow me through hell. Who's this? Herbert Brown, my associate. Oh, the new driver. Amongst other things. Not a patch on Bruce or Wally, Kate. That's none of your business. You could stick a collar and chain on him, call him Rover. You could keep a civil tongue in your head, or I'll kick your ass in the back street myself. Now, you're here because I'm offering you a job. I need muscle to protect me girls selling snow. Well, maybe you could provide that. These blokes of yours, reliable? They're a bunch of ex-cons. What they do is rob drunks. Don't you piss off, Herbert? Go outside, get yourself a drink. They're solid, Kate. I handpicked them myself. 
Yeah, in that case, I'm sure we can come to a mutually satisfactory arrangement. Who knows? Maybe be the start of something big. <laughs> <laughs> There's no reason why you couldn't make a decent name for yourself in this town, Guido. You ever hear tell of an American gangster, Al Capone? He's Italian too. But it didn't stop him. <laughs> Kate's plan to counter the consorting laws was simple. Hire a patsy to take the heat. Fucking what? One first class ticket to London, thanks, Ducky. Only third class available. It says all classes available. Third class only. Mrs. Devine. My money's as good as anyone's. Third class. <gasps> Fucking hell! If she'd set her mind to it, Tilly could have fought the charges stacked up against her or copped it on the chin and done her jail time. The truth is, no one was forcing her to get on that boat. But like every migrant, returning triumphant to the land of her birth was a favourite fantasy. The land of her birth. England, home of everything she held dear. No go with the missus? I'd rather cut me her leg off. She gonna miss you. You know, I miss her too, mate. She'll be right, spend some time with the family. Besides, business won't run itself now, will it? Frank and I can keep an eye on things for you. You know, you boys have only got our best interests at heart. After one last all-night party, the day of Tilly's departure finally arrived. Well, don't get up, you fucking bums. I'm only leaving the fucking country. Oh, you don't sail till noon. What's the bloody hurry? We got to stop to make first. I'm really aching, Ma. Oh, shh, stop me complaining. You're not the first mother to sore boozies, and you won't be the last. Be here, but can't anymore. Ma. Well, isn't this cosy? I just pop by to say au revoir, mes amis. Oh yeah, that's right. <laughs> You're being deported today. <laughs> Hardly. I'm going back to the seat of king and country. I'm the happiest girl on God's earth. What do you want? Look, I know you and I have had our differences, Katie. Well, I didn't want to leave with any ill will between us. Yeah. Plus, you owe me five bob. <sighs> and you owe me a fucking dog. We both know you're the biggest fucking dog in this town. You get out of my house. You stay away from my girls while I'm gone, or I'll get my gym to shoot the rest of your sand, sorry lot. You get out of my house before I rearrange your face. You know why I really came? Because I have everything. I'm young. I'm rich. I'm beautiful. And I reckon if I ever come back to this godforsaken place, you'll be dead. So I just want you to know one thing. I'm the winner. Come on, Jim. This place makes me want to vomit. You're not the winner, you stupid pommy cow. <laughs> this is my daughter, and this is my granddaughter. See, my blood flows through their veins. They're my legacy. And what about you? You're just a barren piece of shit with a murdering, cheating prick for a husband, and nobody loves you. Bitch. Nobody even likes you. Yeah, come on. Not nothing. Come on, then. Nothing, no, nothing. Let, let's go.
Himself here with you. Jim's coming later on. We're gonna go into business. Move back here. Where's Fred? Not here. He's at school, love. You're not taking him. Dad, I'm back now. We can be a family. You're not taking our Fred. He's my son. I'll bloody take him if I want. You still got the old clock, then? It's your father's pride and joy, that is. Craftsmanship. Don't make him like that anymore. This will be him now. There's someone here to meet you. Hello, Fred. Hello, Mrs. Don't you know who I am? Darling, this is our Matilda. I'm your mum, Fred. Oh, you're so handsome. Like your daddy. Go on, come and give us a cuddle. bloke who's been looking after my girls on Victoria Street's been nicked by the consortos. Now, luckily, my girls managed to scarper. Do you think this bloke's likely to cut a deal with the coppers? No. He'll stay solid. Well, you better. That's the third time this month, and I am paying for muscle that's not there. I'll sort something out. <laughs> what are you smiling at? Um, nothing. It is my educated opinion that Tilly Devine has ruined the lives of innocent women by setting them to work in her brothels. She is the worst kind of woman. A filthy, filthy whore who will burn in the unquenchable fires of hell for eternity. Now, she's gonna write it down. You called me here because you said you had a cracker story for the paper. Kate, hey, Tilly Devine's old news. She's gone, forgotten. Stories about her are wrapping last month's fish. Would a bottle of rum make it any more interesting? Two bottles. Done. And you can mention I gave 100 quid to the mission to seamen fund just by way of comparison. When was that? It'll be this week. Don't you worry about the details. Just don't make it sound like it was me who told you. Anything else on Tilly? Something new would be a big help. Well, the punters know she ran brothels. She stole one of my best breeders. What? I loaned Tilly Devine a dog, and she never returned it. Punters love an animal story. <laughs> what a delicious piece of corned beef, love. I hate to think what it must have cost. You like it, Fred? Cat got your tongue. When your mum asks you a question... shy, love. Give him time. You could be a total bloody stranger for all he knows. Yeah, but I'm not, am I? I'm his mum. I gave birth to him. 
I would have taken him with me too, Sep. You wouldn't let me. You, you were too young, dear. Well, I'm not now. I got means. I got a beautiful house. And I'm going to buy a mansion, be a palace compared to this dump. I'm going to send him to a good school. Give him everything his heart desires. And when his dad gets here, I'm going to give him something he's never had. A proper family. There's never been anything proper about you, my girl. And I doubt there ever will. You fucking prick. If you're not too old to get the back of my head. <laughs> This is short. Kate says it's all you're worth. Your boy spent half their time in dial police station. That's bullshit. You pocketed the rest. Instead of looking out for her girls. That's what she said. Empty your pockets. Mate, I'm only that message. Empty your pockets, or I'll cut them open. Look, I'd love to say and shoot the fat with you boys, but uh, we've got an important meeting. We've got to meet me at Ching Chong Tournament down the docks about some snow. Lately trying to stiff us. She wouldn't dare, mate. Good. Know like what's on me. Cobblers. They're gonna love having you back out in the bay. Word on the street is you've been providing muscle for Kate Lee. Don't believe everything you hear, mate. You give us something solid to hang on that drag bitch, you may just stay free, man. <laughs> Gentleman's too stupid to know what's good for him, detective. Beauty. Can't be a big shot in a long bay jail cell. So. Get him out of here. Now hang on! The Crook's classic dilemma. Do I sell my mates down the river in exchange for a free walk? Or do I cop it sweet and go back to jail? No one can know that this came from me. You sure this is good? Worth taking a punt? Coletti's trying to save his own skin. It's hardly worth betting the farm on it. Yeah, if we can nab Kate Lee with a shipment of cocaine, we can send her away. Take Sergeant Anfield and Constable McElroy with you in case you need to search any females. Good hunting, lads. Bloody women. They can have This is Sid Thompson. You'll be under him. G'day. Hey. Welcome aboard. Thanks. A few ladies are done. Some crooks to catch. You're making me nervous with that thing, Sunshine. Looking after your security, Kate. With a valuable shipment, Jew. Never bloody gets here. Never be late for his own funeral. Maybe he got lost. <laughs> Probably chased a cat up a tree. Yeah, bloody time. It's not my fault. Those Chinese are all the same. We followed Brown up from the docks. He went inside about 20 minutes ago, but no one's come out since. I'll cover the back lane in case they make a run for it that way. You're good. Safe to assume in recent form that the bitch is armed, so we go in with weapons drawn. Keep your wits about you and stay with me. Let's get the evil cow. All right, game's over. Oh, just my luck, I've got a good hand. Get this to the girls on Victoria Street. Police! No! 
Nobody moves! Get out of my house, you bastard! Nothing. Where's the snow ass? That's for you. Don't close your eyes, Hey! Tag to you! Search the bitches! Get up. Get hands off You don't me. scare me, Kate. Take her. You bloody bull dikers! Get your hands Wonderful off me! Tom. Shut up! There's still. Grab it. Don't let it burn. Detective, cocaine twists. Tear the place apart. Okay, Lee, you're under arrest for possession of cocaine. You stinky You want to resist the rest of the First chance he gets. You're not me, mother. And he keeps saying that even though he knows full well I am. I hate you. Fred, he's only a child. <laughs> About time he started acting like a man. There's a letter come for you. Oh, God. It'll be from Jim. It'll say when he's coming. I bought him a beautiful typing from Harrods. He's going to love it. Hello, darling. I hope this finds you well. Everything's hunky-dory here in Sydney town. Oh, the old sack of shits in the newspapers again. She's had a go at you in the truth, and then she got herself arrested with a bucket load of snow. Business has been somewhat slowed. But I've managed to keep myself and the girls busy, and I'm keeping a close eye on the pennies and pounds. <laughs> Unfortunately, the slowdown means it would be a bad time to offer both the old bloody. Well, now you'll understand, and... You know how much I miss having you in my arms. And give my love to your mum and dad, and of course, Alfred. He must be loving having his mum back. Hugs and kisses, sweetheart. Gee. Get out. And don't you ever come back. Don't you worry, I won't. Go, no! After me. Well, you got so many enemies you can't guess. Tilly Devine's 12,000 miles away. A lot of people hate your guts, Kate. Kind of woman you are. You know why I hate you? Because you pretend to be a God fearing pillar of the community, but you are nothing but a leech. Telegrams arrived for the prisoner. I oh, am. Yeah. Got a check to make sure it don't contain contraband. your bloody phone. I should get a fucking refund. While Kate was in custody awaiting trial, her elderly mother Charlotte died. Kate was allowed to ship the body to Sydney for burial. She was granted day release to attend the funeral. Hey, this is your great-grandma, Charlotte. Her name's Charlotte, too. Yeah. Say bye-bye, great-grandma. Bye-bye. Yeah, ma. You know she can't hear you. Yeah, ma. 
Why don't you go and pour another pot of tea? About time you got this show on the road, eh? Soon. No. I know, I know she's saved dancing with the angels, but I will miss her so. No sweeter mother ever drew breath. <laughs> Talk about laying it on with a trowel. Oh, London to a brick, she's going to use this to go for an adjournment. Oh, they got Buckley's. <laughs> but that is exactly what Kate did, and exactly what Kate got. She was released on bail on compassionate grounds, which meant Tom Wickham was now one very unhappy copper. He knew to make the drug charges stick, he was going to have to turn someone else close to Kate, closer than Guido Coletti. Big trouble, Herbert. I haven't done nothing. In sorting, mate. I wasn't with anyone. Minor detail. Cocaine possession, however. Well, oh. looky, looky. That's a frame-up. That's your boss's line. Why don't you come to high and with me? You're about as bent as a nine-bob note. Two ways this can go, Herbert. Either you give up your boss, or you go for a nice, long, long holiday out of the bay. You know what they do to good-looking young blokes like you out in the bay, don't you, mate? Hey, maybe you'll enjoy playing mummies and daddies. You'd be the mummy. We know you distribute cocaine for Kate Lee. Bullshit. We saw you down at the docks the other night, mate. You let us to her house. How do you reckon she's going to feel when she hears that in court? All right. Second time lucky, eh? What did he mean? He said you're bent. Ah, bullshitting. Find himself some time. Tom, he was bullshitting. Look, we just had a major win. Bitch is going to do some serious time now. <laughs> Herbert Pal Brown duly testified against Kate Lee, but despite his cooperation, he still wound up with 15 months in Long Bay Jail. The charges against Kate herself were dropped when the cocaine seized from her home mysteriously vanished from the police evidence locker. Fancy that. Hey, Sid, I own you. Don't you forget it. There's no bloody justice in the world. Lieutenant Mackay asked me how you were settling in. I told him that so far you've acquitted yourself admirably. Thank you. No need for thanks. Just keep up the good work. Here, I thought this might be of interest to you. Police Association newsletter. <laughs> of course, they don't want us as members yet, but uh, that will change. <laughs> Can't believe Kate Lee's back on the street. I know, but we don't make the laws or set the punishments. Our job is to serve. Good night, Lillian. Good night, Eddie. Good to see you out and about, Kate. Is it? Oh, I'm touched at your concern for my well-being. I'm curious. How do you think the coppers got onto our pal Herbert that night? How'd they know to follow him from the docks? Well, the man is a shocking sky. He probably bragged about his new job for Kate Lee in every pub in town. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. So it had nothing to do with you, then? I'm allergic to coppers.
You smell distinctly canine to me. If you're calling me a dog, you better be able to prove it. You're sick, by the way. Now you get out of me car and you piss off back to that free barrow where you belong. There was no pomp or ceremony when Tilly arrived home. She wanted to give hubby Jim a nice surprise. How does it feel to have the sunshine on your face, eh? To Marubra, thanks, Ducky. Can't wait to feel me big man's arms around me. Get the fuck out of my house before I cut your fucking tits off! Get her out of the place! Stop all that talking and cleaning! I am polishing your fucking knob! Talk to me like that! You yeah. won't watch it! Please. 